Welcome to the Q3 2020 Storage Labs Town Hall. We have some exciting updates to share with you today. Let's start with a forward-looking statement. This document contains forward-looking statements about our product direction. The development, release, and timing of any features or functionality described for our products remains at the sole discretion of Storage Labs. The information herein is not a commitment to deliver any material code or functionality and should not be relied upon in making purchase decisions. Our topics today are first an executive summary, then tardigrade and network updates, roadmap product update, token governance and compliance, and then we'll close out the presentation with an invitation to our new Q&A format that's held in the community. Our speakers today are Ben Golub, Executive Chairman, Katherine Johnson, CLO, Head of Compliance and People Ops, and I'm Jocelyn Matthews, the Community Manager at Storage. We'll go now to an executive summary with Ben Golub. Ben? Thank you, Jocelyn, and thanks uh, to everybody who's attending this, and a very large thanks, as always, to the members of our community who play such a vital role in enabling us to uh, do what we are doing, which is launching the uh, industry's first enterprise-grade decentralized storage service. It's a, not an easy undertaking, but very few things are that are worthwhile, and we are so fortunate to have such a warm, uh, supportive, and active community. So I'll be talking about a number of these things in greater detail, but to, just to give you a, a quick overview of what's been going on and what is uh, coming up in the next quarter. Our goal for this year was to achieve product market fit with the world's first enterprise grade decentralized storage service. We went into production with that service on March 18th. And as you might imagine, our top priority for the first several months was making sure that we ran that service in an enterprise grade way, which meant uh, making sure that we maintained and continuously improved our durability, our performance and availability, that our first customers, partners and connectors uh, had a great experience. Uh, and by the same token that we provided a good experience for our node operators, growing the number of node operators, improving their experiences and making sure that both the node operators and the users grew in a sustainable, uh, high quality way. Over the past uh, quarter, we also added additional sales headcount to help us bring more users and especially large users and partners on board because Bitcoin and Ethereum had a uh, run up in value. We used that opportunity to take some of the remaining parts of our proceeds from the 2017 token sale that were still held in Bitcoin and Ethereum and convert a portion of that over to cash. And we did something which, while may not sound very exciting, is actually very momentous. We had a successful audit by a third party financial firm. This is a major milestone for any startup, but in particular is a big milestone for startups that are in the crypto space. As to the best of our knowledge, we are the first company to successfully complete an audit as a crypto company, uh, which meant that in addition to the normal financial uh, records and reporting, the uh, auditing firm uh, looked over how we treated our crypto assets, where they're stored, how they're reported, et cetera. And this was done under the guise of a fully uh, independent audit committee consisting of both our independent board member as well as two uh, very well-regarded independents from the financial space. Looking forward to Q4, our focus, as you can imagine, uh, remains on customers, uh, making sure that we bring on board more customers, that we execute well on the partnerships, and that we run our service uh, in an enterprise-grade way. And I suspect for every one of these town halls and into the future, we'll be talking about making sure that we have continuous improvement in durability, performance, and availability, but we're very excited and very pleased with the results we've achieved today. We've also got some major new functionality that we're working on that I'll be talking about in greater detail. Uh, perhaps uh, no piece of new functionality more important than our hosted gateway. We've also launched multi-node management capabilities for our storage node operators, enabling us to uh, not only serve individual node operators well, but commercial node operators who are looking to manage multiple nodes. And uh, just as we aim to be enterprise grade in our service, we also look to be enterprise grade in our governance and our fiscal responsibility. And Catherine will be reporting on what we've been doing there. And as always, given the challenging world that we find ourselves in with COVID and other challenges around the world, we of course need to remain fluid and flexible in adjusting to the world situation. So let me speak a little bit about the Tardigrade uh, network and some of the important numbers behind it. As you may recall, we went into beta with uh, the Tardigrade network over a year ago in August of 2019. And for every phase between going into beta and launching, we had a series of gates that we needed to pass that we published. And we did not pass from one phase to another phase until we made sure that we were achieving 
continuous improvement across a wide range of different criteria. As you can see in the end here, we have the criteria that we established for going into production in March. And if you look at the uh, second column, it's where we are now. And now in November of 2020, I'm happy to report that we have 100% file durability. This means that since we uh, went into beta over a year ago in August of 19, we have not lost a single file and we've actually not gotten close to losing a single file. Our availability, this is your ability to go onto the site and successfully download a, a file is 99.99, which is world-class. Our uh, upload and download performances, especially at the 95th percentile are on par with uh, Amazon Web Services, and we expect that to be even better as we move to our hosted gateway and multi-part services. We have a healthy number of nodes, uh, 9,300 at last count in 85 countries. Those nodes uh, are very low churn. We have uh, that uh, was our minimum borrow, so we're very excited about that. We, uh, we built, assuming 2% churn, we're down at 1% churn, which indicates that our, uh, we're doing a good job uh, with our node operators. They're doing a good job by us. Uh, and that is a very important metric for ensuring that we have uh, high quality availability, durability, and performance for our users. And our capacity has grown now uh, uh, over 22 petabytes of capacity, uh, which we hope to continue to grow as we bring on uh, newer and larger customers. So since launch, we've grown to 9,300 node operators that I mentioned. Uh, over 50% of those have been with us for more than 270 days, which is also a critical metric for us. We don't have uh, fly-by-night node operators. We want our node operators to have a long-term relationship with us, and we make a long-term commitment to that. In terms of users, we've had close to 15,000 users sign us, and those users are storing over 180 million objects. We like those numbers. We want them to be even higher. It's critical for us to have good users and to translate those users into revenue, and that's a major focus for us now and into the future. Uh, but we are very excited by the kinds of uses that people are putting Tardigrade to. These are real-world use cases. As we mentioned in the previous town hall, our initial focus out the gate was providing good solutions for the backup use case. This is uh, general backup as well as connector-specific backups for databases, for virtual machines, for Kubernetes, for disks, and more of course, both backup and recovery. Over the past quarter, we've also seen some interesting new use cases that are in many ways an extension of this, not just the backup, but also the sharing of data. And this includes blockchain thinking and sharing, academic data sharing, and video transcoding at edge. And what those all have in common is that they involve large data sets that uh, need to be uploaded, that need to be high quality, that need to be available, that need to be accurate, and they need to be shared widely. We are excited about the use cases. We're also very excited about the users, and in particular, uh, the number of users who are willing to speak publicly about what they're doing with Tardigrade. Uh, some of the users that we are uh, excited about and users and partners include Fastly, a well-known uh, edge, uh, edge company that has been talking about using us and has mentioned how they've used us in conjunction with transcoding at the edge. We've uh, had Continued great results with Connected, uh, which is a scientific data sharing. Uh, FileZilla, which is uh, file transfer, one of our longest and best partners. ETC Labs, which is the organization that's behind Ethereum Classic, using us to make the blockchain that's associated with Ethereum Classic widely available. They actually reported over 1,400% uh, uh, improved performance by making that blockchain available via Tardigrade. And two large, well-regarded uh, universities, Carnegie Mellon and the University of Maryland, using us for academic data sharing. And we continue to make progress with those customers as well as other users whose names we are not yet entitled to speak about publicly, but we're very excited about, and continue to work on partnerships and integrations. As a, uh, as a startup in the enterprise space, one of the most important things that we are doing at this phase of our corporate life cycle, cycle is making sure that the early customers have a fantastic experience, that we service them well, and that they can serve as references for other customers. And one of the most gratifying things that happened this past quarter is that we were able to produce eight uh, different published case studies. These are available on our blog post. And here are some of the, our favorite quotes from the users. This is a quote from Halsey Miner, uh, well known in the space for video coin network, talking about Storage Lab transforming cloud storage for video transcoding. Michael Michael at VMware, uh, talking about the use of storage and connection with Valero and Kubernetes, and a gentleman from Carnegie Mellon who was speaking about Tardigrade being an ideal solution for sharing data sets because it is globally available, 
and a uh, similar quote from uh, Dan Wine at the University of Maryland, uh, speaking about the advantages of tardigrade uh, and our parallel, parallel architecture for uh, bandwidth issues. Again, very excited that we're able to work with these people and certainly very excited that uh, we're also enabling very important research to happen on important scientific problems, such as uh, those that are being solved at Carnegie Mellon and University of Maryland. So looking forward to Q4 of 2020, we have the major new pieces of functionality that we're working on, uh, perhaps none more important than the hosted gateway. Uh, we'll be talking about this more as we get closer to launch, but uh, as you may be aware, most individuals who use Tardigrade now have to download and run their own gateway. And while this is a good solution for many, it does provide a lot of friction. Uh, what we are moving to is giving customers the option of using a multi-tenant hosted gateway that is hosted by us. Uh, this has several advantages. It makes it faster to come on board. It uh, significantly reduces by a factor of 2.7 the amount of data that needs to be uploaded by the customers. It makes downloaded data much faster. It enables a broad new set of use cases, including those that involve web applications. And it also means that for users who are transferring data from another cloud provider, such as Amazon or Google or Microsoft, they won't incur large uh, egress charges from those services. All in all, a major piece of functionality that we're rolling out, along with uh, performance improvements that come from multi-part upload, uh, and an important step on our path to being even more fully decentralized is uh, multi-region satellites, which enable, which means that the satellites, in addition to being composed of multiple different services and servers, will all be stored in, each satellite will be stored in multiple different regions. So not only will the satellites represent different regions, but within each satellite, the servers will be stored in different regions, meaning that even if there's an outage at our data center provider, uh, we will not go out. Other major things that we're working on include performance improvements uh, and continuous improvement across the board and enabling multi-large uh, commercial node operators to operate multiple nodes. Unfortunately, no presentation these days is complete without a, an acknowledgement of the challenges that we in the world are facing uh, in uh, an era of COVID-19. We implemented a set of, uh, of policies and procedures uh, right when this broke uh, in March of this year. And just to give you a sense, for the most part, this has been uh, uh, internally a fairly easy transition for us to make. We're already a highly decentralized company, 45 people in 23 different cities and 13 different countries. Uh, we were used to operating in a remote fashion, and so uh, there has not been too much of a, of a transition for us. Uh, working remotely in the age of COVID. Uh, we made the decision to launch in March, not knowing where the world was going, and we're very glad that we did that. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's been without challenges. It's uh, difficult to uh, bring on board new customers with a new product and attract new users if you can't go to conferences and you can't visit customers in person, but we're uh, working, working through that and uh, excited by the recent momentum that we've seen. Going into uh, March of this year, we also implemented a more conservative budget and we performed better, better than we expected on the budget. And so we're now in a very strong uh, financial position and expect to end the year with over 24 months of runway, which means that we'll have two years uh, starting in January, uh, if nothing changes to build a great service and build a great business. But of course, we're hoping that uh, revenue starts uh, really taking off in 2021, especially with the great users that we have on board right now uh, and the new functionality that we're adding with the hosted gateway and other things. And looking a little bit more broadly, uh, while the time to resolve COVID is of course uncertain and out of, and out, of our, out of our hands and these are unprecedented times for the world, I think history has taught us that uh, often the strongest and most exciting companies are built in the crucible of difficult times. And certainly disruptive cloud solutions like VMware and Salesforce and AWS did really well during the last financial crisis. And we certainly hope that um, the same uh, proves to be true in this crisis uh, for cloud storage. And certainly we're already starting to see the benefits, uh, of the, uh, uh, the extent to which um, companies are able to, uh, cloud companies are able to take advantage and draw strength uh, during these times of difficulty. But uh, it's not enough, of course, for us to do well, for the industry to do well. We want to do our part to help 
make sure that the world can address this serious challenge. As you may know, we've had uh, for several months now a COVID-19 storage program, which uh, enables free storage for nonprofits, hospitals, and other organizations working to combat the virus. And part of developing new cures and uh, new vaccines and contact tracing, uh, uh, these are all very data intensive activities. And we're glad to be able to do our part to make, uh, make it a little bit more affordable. And with that, I'd like to turn things over to Katherine Johnson to talk about token governance and compliance. Thanks. So our quarterly token balances and flows for Q3 2020 was published in October. At each town hall, we provide the highlights from that report, which provides detailed information on the balances and flows of our storage token holdings. We've had about two years of regular quarterly reporting with all of the reports posted on our blog. This quarter, we had 13 million tokens that were used for storage operations, with 1.2 million tokens going to storage node operators, 1.9 million tokens going to third-party providers, and 1.5 million tokens used in the salary program. At the end of the quarter, we had 13 million in storage operating reserves and 245 million in long-term lockup, which we'll discuss on the next slide. So 245 million storage tokens were enrolling time lock contracts at the beginning of Q3. As discussed in prior town halls and in our quarterly written reports, we initially relocked 100% of our time lock tokens every six months. During Q1 of 2019, we divided the time lock reserve into eight equal sized tranches of 30.6 million tokens that unlock in successive quarters and relock respectively to the same quarter two years later. Each tranche unlocks the last day of the quarter. So as you can see, the tranche that unlocked at the end of Q1 of 20 was relocked until Q1 of 22. The tranche that unlocked at the end of Q2 this year was relocked until Q2 of 2022. Now the tranche that unlocked at the end of Q3, however, was not relocked. We announced earlier this year that we would not be relocking that tranche as a precautionary measure to ensure sufficient operational reserves for the last quarter of the year. The Q4 report will show a transfer of those tokens to our operational reserves. This leaves 214,375,000 tokens in long-term lockup going forward with seven tranches. We will resume the relocks with the tranche that unlocks at the end of Q4 this year. The report that is posted on our blog provides addresses on major reserves so that the balances are verifiable, along with more detailed information on the summary I've given you here. With that, I'll turn it back over to Ben. Thank you, Catherine. And to end, we'd like to do something a little bit different. Uh, we know a lot of you may be viewing this video on YouTube, but we also wanted to make the video available directly from the Tardigrade Network and are doing so in conjunction with a new piece of functionality that we built uh, called the Object Mapper. And as you may know, when any file is uploaded to the storage network, uh, it is encrypted, it is erasure coded, and it is split into uh, roughly 80 pieces of which any 29 can be used to put it back together. And each of those 80 pieces goes to a different node uh, across the network. And we have, again, 9,300 nodes in 85 countries. Uh, with this, uh, uh, for this video as well, you'll be able to go and see precisely which of the 80 nodes it's stored on. And uh, as it's downloaded, you'll be able to see which of the 29 nodes uh, are responding fastest in order to enable you to view the video. And it's actually happening in real time. The pieces are responding, uh, the nodes are responding, serving up pieces, uh, which are then stitched back together and enabling you to seamlessly view and scrub video. We're very excited about it. And we certainly hope that uh, you'll enjoy this opportunity to really see the, the target grade network in action. And with that, thank you all for attending this. Um, we are going to be handling questions and answers in a slightly different way, and I'll turn it back to Jocelyn to talk to you about that. Thanks, Ben. So the Q&A has moved to a new format, and it lives inside the community forum now. We decided that we wanted to go to where our people were, and the address for that is forum.storage.io in January 2021. Keep an eye on the forum for more details, and if you have questions that you'd like to see in the Q&A, please go ahead and send them to ask at storage.io, and we'll be collecting those ahead of time in addition to answering live questions. Until next time, Thank you and goodbye.